Hey everybody, it's Stu, AG6AG. I did this video on how to connect multiple programs uh, to an individual COM port of a radio in order to do uh, remote control of that radio. Uh, it's an interesting subject and it's a bit complicated. I hope that I've done a good enough job to get it all across. Anyway, hey, if you could, Go down to the bottom and click subscribe, will you? It really helps me out. And if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. Now, on with the show. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. And today, we're going to try to talk about sharing COM ports. Why do we want to share COM ports in amateur radio? Well, we want to have multiple programs to be able to control our radio through CAT controls. We're going to talk about what we want to do, what works, what doesn't work, and hopefully a little bit about why. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some uh, diagrams here. Here you go. Here's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to have programs individually talking to the operating system to our radio. And we want the radio to be able to talk back to all of them. And we want them all to coexist in this marvelous world of sharing. Well, I hate to say it. The reality of it is, this doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Well, we've got to kind of understand how COM port communication works. Basically, COM port communication between your program and your radio, it is a binary stream of commands and a binary uh, stream of responses that move back and forth between the program and between the radio. Now, there's also a lot of other things that are taking place. You have handshakes, you have certain... Um, uh, protocols, modes, uh, baud rates, all sorts of other things that have to all match up between the two devices in order to get it to work properly. Now, think about having that kind of restriction between two communication points and then trying to introduce a second point to talk like this in a triangle back and forth. It's not going to work. Okay, the only way that would work is if we had two COM ports, right? Two of them on the radio or three of them on the radio. So we've got to figure out a way to do that in software. And it's not quite as easy as you might think. This is really what we want to do. But this illustrates the problem really well. If we have some sort of a software splitter in the middle here, Basically, we can probably get one of the systems to talk all the time, one of the programs, but the rest of them are going to be confused. Uh, many people that talk about sharing COM ports basically talk about sharing COM ports for things that would require serial uh, reception to the program, where the program really doesn't transmit uh, anything to that serial port for the radio to do. Um, a good example of that actually would be uh, something that just listened for changes in, in stuff that would be broadcast by the radio. Unfortunately, CAT just doesn't arbitrarily broadcast data. You have to ask for what the data setting is and it will answer back with it. So you'd have to have one program asking all the questions and all the other programs receiving them. And those programs would have to understand that they could never ask the question. See where we're going with this? Now, this can work if you're doing something like a GPS or something like that, where you want to split up the GPS signal amongst a bunch of different programs. And there are programs that you can tell just to listen to the data output, not to uh, try to talk or sync up or handshake with the COM port. Okay. Anyway, however, that's not what we're looking to do today. Now, uh, I list COM0, COM, and HUB, and that's what COM0, COM, and HUB can actually do, and they do it very well, by the way. Uh, 
Com Zero Com also can make what we call uh, virtual uh, serial cables, basically, that exist only inside the computer, where you can connect one end of the serial cable to one program and the other end of the serial cable to another program, and those two programs now can talk through those serial cables. Hub allows you to join them together, okay, multiples of those to join together like we talked about in this picture here, for something like, oh, I don't know, getting dumps of stuff that, for logging, things like that. That was its original intention. Um, but, again, that's not what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to do, and this is kind of how we need to do it. We need some sort of an interpreter. We need some sort of software package that will sit between the radio and all of our software. And that interpreter has to understand the language that our program is trying to talk to the radio with, because every different radio manufacturer utilizes a different language, basically different codes that it sends to change a frequency or uh, read a frequency or read a mode or change a mode or initiate push to talk. All, all those commands are different for different radios. So this interpreter has to understand those commands. It has to virtualize several ports inside the system, inside that program, and become different COM ports, let's say virtual ones, that exist that the programs can connect to, and that interpreter has to pretend it's the radio, okay, where this program here is requesting a change frequency, and that goes to the interpreter, and the interpreter re-requests that change frequency to the radio, the radio responds to the interpreter, the interpreter takes the response and re-encapsulates it in the response code that should be coming back from the radio and delivers it to the program. So as far as the program is concerned, this interpreter is the radio. And during that period of time, of course, you can have other programs making requests. Right now, these are just listening. But you notice there's no data being transferred back and forth because they're not making any requests Remember what I said about cat controls. You make a request and the radio responds. The radio doesn't broadcast, right? So you can stack all these requests. The interpreter understands how to queue those requests and knows where to reply to them. And, um, you know, I would assume it also would have some optimization if all the software is asking for the same thing and it's getting it, it's going to return it but it may not pull the radio three times to find out what the frequency is if all the programs are requesting it. It should optimize and request it once and then return it to all three of these virtual ports. I hope you're following me here, okay? What can do that? Well, let's take a look right here. Here is a program called OmniRig. There's other programs out there, Hamlib, um, Win for uh, Yesu, Win for Icom, Win, Win for Elcraft does this. But all these programs work on one or two different theories, okay? Uh, OmniRig actually has its own communication language with the program. So the program, you tell the program the radio you're talking to is an OmniRig radio. And OmniRig converts that into whatever the radio understands and maintains that kind of program. Uh, Hamlib does the same thing. OmniRig operates as a demon that will handle multiple connections to multiple radios. So it's really kind of neat that way. Hamlib can or doesn't have to have a daemon. It can be used for a single connection, but you can also run a Hamlib daemon that will allow it to do that. Um, unfortunately, it's extremely complicated to get that daemon to work in Windows, if at all. It really is designed to be a, uh, a daemon in Linux, which uh, 
creates all sorts of other complications beyond what uh, we want to talk about in this video. But I'll just mention it. Uh, this does allow multiple programs to talk to your radio at the same time. I currently use it all the time to use uh, Log for Old Men 2 and uh, HDSDR to talk to the radio at the same time and get data from the radio at the same time. Uh, however, it doesn't solve another problem, which would be, I want. let's say I want to put a piece of software in that doesn't understand OmniRig, like FL Digi, or uh, oh, another great example is uh, um, N1MM, my favorite uh, contest logging software. Well, what do you do then? Well, you need a more intelligent interpreter that will lie to the software, right? Well, uh, Win for uh, Yesu actually does that really well. You set up a bunch of virtual serial links and you tie the software into an individual software tree. And Win for Yesu communicates with each one of those receiving the commands and pretending it's the radio and transitioning those commands over to the radio. Really, really well done and very, very helpful. Now, if you don't have uh, Yesu 991 or 3000 or 9000 or whatever, uh, Win for Yesu isn't going to work for you. If you don't have a ICOM radio that is compatible with Win for ICOM, it's not going to work for you. It's very much for a particular radio. Uh, it's also pay for play software. I mean, you're going to buy Win for uh, Yesu or Win for ICOM or whatever. Um, which I strongly recommend you do if you own that radio because there are lots of other advantages to it. But that said, it's 50, 60 bucks. I mean, it's not cheap. So, uh, you know, it, it's up to you. But it really, for the radios it supports, it solves this problem so well. That said, I have another solution, and that, belong, uh, that involves HDSDR, which we'll take a look at right now. Uh, so let me change my setup and see where we're at. All right, well, let's go ahead and launch OmniRig and take a look at how it actually works. So I've zoomed this in quite a bit so you could get a general idea of what OmniRig looks like. And this is basically Omri, OmniRig settings. I mean, there's not a lot to it. You've got Rig 1, which is I have set to my uh, FTDX3000. You can look. I mean, they have ICOMs. They've got all sorts of radios in here. I mean, quite an assortment, right? My uh, FTDX3000 is on COM11. And these are my settings. I don't want to go into like a whole mess of setup here. I can have a second Rig 2. That's my FT991. And it's on COM7. And, of course, I can make any... It, actually, if I had two of these radios and they were both hooked up, I'd have two different radios uh, on the same thing, right? So let's take a look. Let me uh, get back to kind of a normal display here. One second. There we go. And let's take a look at it in action. So first off, uh, let me pull up... Let's see. Well, let me... Let me go ahead and pull up, okay, my uh, HDSDR, and right now the radio is set to uh, 7.213, and I'll just reach over here, spin the radio dial, and you can see that my tune frequency is changing. You can see it moving here. You can also see that my, uh, I, I like to tune with the knob and leave my uh, local oscillator in a, uh, on a particular place, so uh, my Waterfall isn't constantly changing. That's just a preference that I have. Uh, let me see if I can get down a little bit tighter on that. And let me go ahead and open up Log for Old Men. And you'll see right there, right? There you go. There, uh, It's set right there to 213. And again, the same thing. You know, it's just changing in both spots, right? Kind of cool. All right. Well, so that's two programs working together. Uh, oh, and by the way, of course, uh, let me scooch this up. Oh, and uh, 
Log for Old Man 2 will take advantage of the second radio. That's my 991, and it's currently sitting on a, uh, um, uh, on a repeater frequency, okay? You look here, though, I have not changed there what uh, OmniRig rig it's looking at. I could do that, but it um, doesn't make a lot of sense for the waterfall for VHF, UHF. All right, so one of the neater parts about this, too, is uh, I have two programs. They're allowed to change it. I mean, kind of the cool part here, too, is I can click over here and look. You see I'm changing the frequency on the radio like right there, okay? And let's see if we hear them. There we go, all right? So we're able to... Whiskey Delta 8, um, say again. So we're able to jump around all over the place, right? You know? So anyway, um, it's controlling both devices, so all of my logging is going to be saved with that. So let's take a look at adding maybe a third program that supports OmniRig and that would uh, that would actually be uh, WSJTX so there we go and uh, let me tell it it's 40 meters get it on the right frequency here there we go so what we can look at here is I've got 704, or excuse me, 7074. I've got this, the tune here, set to 7074. And take a look at my log here, 7074. And they're all controlled individually, which is really cool. All right? Now, what doesn't work with OmniRig? Well, a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Stuff like, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, how about, uh, oh my goodness, stuff that doesn't work with OmniRig. Well, one thing that doesn't work with OmniRig is um, FL Digi. Another thing that doesn't work with OmniRig is uh, N1MM. Uh, there's a lot of programs that don't run with OmniRig. OmniRig is a great solution if you're running certain groups of programs, but it isn't always the best. So, let me go ahead and uh, through the magic of uh, all the voodoo that I do here, let me pop back here and I am going to go ahead and set up to show you something that will kind of blow your mind a little bit. It blew mine when I found it. Anyway, I'll be right back. All right, well, you remember when I was talking about COM0COM and the creation of uh, virtual serial cables um, inside your computer between programs? Well, guess what? This is the setup program for it. Now, I have a total of eight virtual ports configured, okay? And I use them for different things. I use a program called... Uh, um, win for Yesu to share a lot of COM ports, okay? Uh, but we're going to use one that's not used right now, which is my virtual COM port pair 7, which consists of COM18 on one side and COM28 on the other. I take the default when I make these. I just, I, I click on add a pair. I change it to normal COM port names and numbers on either side. I make sure they're not being used by anything else. I click apply and this stuff works. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to show you something really neat about HDSDR. I need to go to a little bit of a different zoom here. All right. And here we are in the bottom quadrant here of uh, uh, SD8 or HDSDR, I'm going to go to options. Now, if you want to learn how to set this up with um, uh, RTL uh, SDR or uh, one of the uh, SDR Pros or something like that, I have some videos on that. Just uh, take a look on my channel, okay? Um, real quick how to's to get this all working uh, for HDSDR. Now, if I go down here, and by the way, what I did is I clicked on Options, F7. And I'm going to go down beneath all this stuff. 
all the way down to cat to hdr now believe it or not this thing will sit as an interface between another piece of software and your radio and it will broker the connections so i'm going to choose the port and on this side i'm going to choose the high number port com 28 that i showed you before then I'm going to choose the baud rate, and in my particular case, the baud rate is going to be 38.4. Uh, you can actually make this whatever you want. I like to set the baud rate to what my actual baud rate is on the radio. I don't know if it helps. It just is easier for me to remember. Uh, for push-to-talk activation pin, I'm going to say none. I'm going to call it cat, and I'm going to click on activate. All right, but I still got to change another thing here. Under options, under TX. I'm going to enable the TX button for OmniRig 1. Okay, please respect the law. It's warning you that it's possible for you to lock up the transmitter if something goes wrong. Okay, I've yet to do that, but there's always a possibility. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to look over at my transmitter and make sure it isn't doing something it shouldn't be. Uh, now we're going to go to options one more time and down under TX... I'm going to enable TX button for CAT to HDR, okay? Those two items are enabled. Now, I want to make sure that now that I've enabled transmit, it works. So I have a little TX button right here. Um, and uh, you'll notice uh, that I am on uh, 7080. Uh, and also, I have a whole lot of noise here. Not really sure why. Let me make sure that uh, I'm in good shape with that. Uh, but, oh, well, there's one reason right there. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit more reasonable. Anyway, let me go ahead and hit TX and make sure that the radio transmits. And, yes, the radio went into transmit. Okay, so that's good. All right. That worked. So, now, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop this back to a normal capture, and I'm going to open up FL Digi. All right, so here is FL Digi, and I'm going to go ahead and configure... my cat control and I wonder let me see if I can get a zoom in on this let me see hey look at that that will make it a little easier all right now I'm gonna go down to rig control and I'm gonna go to hamlib and notice it has my rig here well no we're not gonna use that okay with the interface of HDSDR, it obeys a very, very old Kenwood set of commands. Very old. So what I'm looking for is, let's see, uh, I'm trying to find it. Boy, there's a lot of Kenwoods in here. If I remember correctly, the one that it emulates the best is the Let's see. Let's try the TS uh, TS fifty. All right. What COM port was that? Well, we chose twenty eight on one side, so eighteen's the COM port on the other. Now, let's see through the miracle of magic. We're going to set our baud rate down to thirty eight hundred. Our stop bits to one and we are going to go ahead and see if it'll energize it initialized and look now let me back away take a look at where we're tuned here i'm going to go ahead and save and close all right. Well, let's see what happens if I. <laughs> Will you look at that? 
it's actually changing the frequency. Oh, this is amazing. All right. So we want to see if it's going to tune. So a couple things I want to do here. All right. Safety first, I always say. Let me go ahead and get myself set up here with the tuner for my 40 meter uh, digital settings. Always remember, check your settings before you do anything. Uh, you don't want to send transmission or you don't want to transmit with a misconfigured system. Uh, let's see if tune works and I'm going to turn Monty on. You may or may not be able to hear the tone. Let's see. So what did I just do? Well, I just set FL Digi up to work through OmniRig using HDSDR as a shim in the middle. What else can I do with that? Well, I'll tell you. Just about any other program that I want to configure to work with this, I can do it. Anyway, the other thing that you need to also know is I can run multiple instances of HDSDR. And I don't even have to have a uh, RTL-SDR or anything else plugged in to run the software and allow it to remote control my rig. Okay? HDSDR is a free download. Now... I'm not going to go into depth on how to run multiple instances and have them not interfere and all that kind of stuff. There's some really good literature on it for HDSDR. You can create multiple uh, of those uh, virtual COM ports. Works really well. All right. So with that, let me uh, do a couple more setup items. I'll be right back with another screen to show you how this all works and comes together with uh, Win for uh, Yesu. Well, okay. Here, right here, is uh, Win for Yesu. Uh, again, this is not a free program. Okay, you got to buy this. If you have a Yesu uh, 991 or a Yesu 3000 or a Yesu, I think, 5000 and 9000, uh, these all will work with this program. Um, I looked at a lot of different methods of sharing COM ports and this one actually turned out being a million times more uh, robust than just about anything that I had out there. So remember how I showed you about the virtual COM ports? Well, in the setup in this, and, and by the way, um, if I go to settings here, and I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and try to zoom this one sec here. There we go. Um, right now, this is basically my main hardware setup, okay? And talks about all the different things. This also has full support for PAN adapters. I don't use it, but it has full support for it. Um, the most important thing to me, though, was the auxiliary cat port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? It gives me six software packages that I can assign different COM ports to, and this will broker all of those commands. It knows all of the ASU commands for the, ni or for the 991 and for the uh, uh, 3000. It knows all the controls, and it can broker every one of those commands through this interface, which is really, really cool. I've given them uh, little descriptions here. Uh, this is the one I have for OmniRig. This is the one I have for N1MM. This is the one I have for FL Digi. This is other. I have a, you know, I have two or three that I don't actually use because remember, I'm using everything else kind of through OmniRig. And OmniRig is one of the things that I share here. So, I have a lot of programs I can tie in with this particular setup, okay? Well, let's take a look at 
um, win for Yesu. Um, this is a pay for play program. Um, you know, I wouldn't have bought it if it hadn't have been for its ability to share radio com ports. Um, and the way that it works made it usable for me. Um, and let me just show you real quick um, that uh, it does so, so, so much more. Um, great example, I can control anything at all from a mouse clip. Uh, I can change my RF power, right, what my output power is. Uh, I can change my mic gain, my uh, AF gain. If squelch was set, I could modify squelch. I can uh, turn on and off my equalizer. I can turn on and off my processor, which basically is the compressor, you know, giving you that extra little chop when you're in uh, one of those uh, pileups. Uh, adjust the bandwidth, okay, my uh, listening width. Uh, I can uh, basically pile in a shift, okay, uh, for the basic system that I'm using to get away from a noisy person next to a person I want to talk to. Uh, digital noise reduction as well with control on how to do it. I mean, all the controls that are on the radio are available in this program. Sometimes they're a little hard to find, but they're here. You know, again, when I went and bought this, I thought this was a bunch of fluff uh, that I didn't need. And I bought it strictly to be able to share COM ports. And it does that extremely well. After a period of time, guess what? You know, uh, I ended up falling in love with the program just in what it was able to do on my PC for my radio. It also, by the way, is compatible with my 991, uh, although I have to change some stuff around to do it. Anyway, you know what? That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, talk to you soon from AG6AG. Well, there you go. That video has a lot of information in it, and I hope I did it justice and gave you the information you need to do what you want to do with sharing your radio com ports with multiple programs. Now, uh, Win for Yesu, that is really, really a great program, and it's worth every penny that they charge you for it. Um, also, he writes Win for um, Elecraft, he writes Win for ICOM, I think he even writes a Win for Ken uh, Kenwood. So he writes the software for different mix of radio. They're typically the higher-end radios, the higher-end HF radios, but he does write the software that might just be con uh, compatible with the rig that you own. I suggest you take a serious look at it. Now, for me, the uh, HDSDR solution works really well, too. Uh, and I've ran tests in the field on radios that don't support Win for Yesu and have been able to use N1MM in conjunction with uh, the HDSDR waterfall display, both talking to the uh, uh, radio as well as Win for, uh, or excuse me, uh, Log for Old Men 2 operating as well and taking direct feeds from N1MM via UDP. So uh, I've got it and had it all working. Thing to remember on the HDSDR, even though you're running a Yesu or a Kenwood uh, or whatever, you always define your radio as something like a, uh, you know, the uh, TS50, TS50S, uh, something that's really, really old Kenwood, because that's the library that they use in HDSDR to read it and then convert it into whatever your radio actually is. Anyway, with that, thank you so much for watching. If you can, hit the subscribe button, and if you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there. You can click on the notification icon, too, and you'll get an alert every time we come out with a new video. Uh, and, by the way, any comments or questions, make them down in the comment section. I love questions, uh, and we try to get them answered within a day. Uh, anyway, with that, this is Stu, AG6AG. Bidding you 73, and gosh, I hope to hear you on the air.